Hi everyone, Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything with Mrs. Roy Reads Anything, <laughs> aka Dr. Jenny. Dr. Jenny, um, it is and I. We're going to do a tag, the cheesy book tag, which is a, a dairy themed tag with some stuff, a bonus cheese things as well. So this was an original tag created by Colvidge Girl and Sir Chonk at Pick Your Pop Culture Poison, mm -hmm. um, which is a great channel, and I'll link to the tag video. Um, I was tagged by Alex Unabridged, another fantastic channel. So let's get going. Yeah. So here Tea come the prompts. Sketch. We're going to both. We, I think we can probably all do all. Probably both do most <laughs> of the prompts, or both all the well, prompts. Well, we'll manage. First one is uh, extra sharp cheddar, i.e. an old standby. I've got a few of those. So. Well, I've got my standby isn't particularly old, um, but is this is an author I just go to when I need a palate cleanser of mm. sorts, which is Ian Rankin's Rebus books. Mm. And I've probably read about two thirds of them now. And we have been to a cheese shop that he has been to we have i'd <laughs> forgotten that um Cromarty on the yeah, black isle which is a place in scotland it's just north um, of inverness if you want to look it up on the map i think they're closing actually they are. but in the glory days of Cromarty, there was a cheese shop there that he's written about how grace it is yeah um okay for me an old standby would be the conan stories of robert e howard sword and sorcery stories as explored extensively on this on this channel um including in um cimmerian september last last year last year hmm. Holy okay heck so that's a good one yeah so moving swiftly on number two swiss something that is enjoyable but loaded with holes mm. i would say most B level and below murder stories. Mm. Um, there are levels. <laughs> well, yeah. Ian Rankin's A level. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> in, in, in English literature. In English literature, yeah. Um, but yeah, most murder stories really are full of holes. Well, you just I, have to go with it. Yeah, I put Raymond Chandler. Mm, oh, God, ah. Who I think admitted that the big sleep had some some gaps in it and well that's because it was six short stories stitched together okay good chandler apologist <laughs> um but to be honest i read that those i probably read more for the character and the atmosphere than yeah. anything so uh, okay so swiss cheese how about as as cheeses we would eat we would have a cheddar we would i quite like swiss cheese i've never had swiss cheese i don't think don't be ridiculous you've had the holes I've had the holes, yeah, that's true. Number Proceed. three, Rock Four, a book everyone loves, but not for you. Yes, no. Do you want to go first? Yes, now, don't hate me and don't come round with pitchforks and stuff, <laughs> but I did not enjoy The Essex Serpent by mm. Sarah Perry. And I know, mm. you know, some people it's like a big life thing, but... Um, just couldn't get into it that Essex serpent no I I've been that one yeah yeah we're but, a Essex serpent free household aren't we, we are indeed uh, but my rock for is watership down mm. and I'm quite happy to say that um I don't care if you come around with pitchforks I will never read it number four Gouda or is it Gouda Good. Uh, an underrated or underappreciated book. Well, I'm going to launch in with Lady Audley's Secret, um. which is a Victorian novel that is kind of early detective type fiction. Uh, so it's by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Much more, uh, well, one of the sort of highly commercial celebrity authors of Victorian times who's become a little bit forgotten. People go on and on about The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins being 
this sort of seminal detective novel and it is fantastic but I say the same thing about Lady Audley. Lady Audley. Lady Audley's Secret. Um, yes, I've concatenated Gouda and Cotswold. Okay. Um, this is an author I think everybody should find and enjoy. Um, Craig Schaefer. I've banged on about Craig Schaefer before, I think. Um, Craig Schaefer is the pen name of Heather Schaefer and they are um, occult detective kind of things, some of them. So she's got a kind of world of interlinked stories. The main character is Daniel Faust, who's a magician. Um, there's Harmony Black, who's an FBI agent working in a special unit that deals with occult and weird stuff. And then there's other bits and bits and bobs and a new series she started recently that's set in New York, which is really good. And they're just dead reliable and mm. I never know what's going on. The Daniel Faust ones have got a lot more kind of heist, of a heist vibe. Mm. There's often kind of big complex plots to, to, to do something to for some reason. So my... Cotswold. Well, I mean, I've never come across Cotswold no, cheese. The book you we well, have, we... a book I wish everyone knew about, like Cotswold, the unknown cheese. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say I've got a two really, a vintage one and a modern one. So, Lud in the Mist by Hope Mealies is a fantasy novel, um, still in print. If you like, say Neil Gaiman who writes the introduction to the book, saying how great it is, um, you might find interesting stuff in Lud in the Mist. It's sort of, it's not swords and things. It's uh, enchanting, quite philosophical. So Lud in the Mist is good. And of, of recent times, The Goblin Emperor by Catherine oh, that Addison. Was great. That um, was great. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's a standalone fantasy novel. Um about a sort of a, a reluctant a reluctant monarch basically and it's a little bit coming of agey as well really good well i've read one number six american cheese enjoyable but junk but i mean i would say in defense of that kind of cheese sometimes that exact that's it's exactly what, what you want. want yeah i have written down my current christmas cozy mm -hmm. as my american cheese at that moment lots of lots it's it's basically it's hallmark with sex mm. but only a bit of it okie dokie so yeah it's good i loved it and i love that kind of thing well given that the whole junk idea is the sort of central central tenet of uh, of garb august that yeah. gave me a lot of reading back in august um I'll wheel out once again CB Angel by Larry Adcock, <laughs> a uh, novel cashing in on the CB craze of the time, written largely in in, in CB lingo. Okie doke, mm. number seven is Mozzarella. It's complex, but it holds together. Adrian Tchaikovsky, anything Adrian Tchaikovsky. It may just be because I've got this, my memory is basically Swiss cheese. Um, and I find it very difficult to remember plots while I'm reading the book, which is a bit, can be a bit of a pain. But yeah, Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, science fiction writer. Science fiction yeah. writer. Um, and writes a vast amount of, I think he must be at least five people. No one can write that many <laughs> books. Um, but they're great. I love him. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'd, I'd endorse that one. Um, I put a book rather than an author, um, uh, The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, oh. which is big, sprawling, deep thinky stuff, but it also tells a rip roaring tale. It's very immersive and enjoyable. Number eight, Parmesan cheese that gets better with age. Um, Middlemarch. Oh. I read it in my 20s when I was reading a lot of um, George Eliot mm. and I liked it well enough. But when we listened to it, mm. um, it was just like, 
I don't remember Middle March being this funny. Yeah, it was we'll really, <laughs> really funny. I'm staying more in the SF area with Gene Wolfe's Book of the New Sun, mm. a, a series of books, four books originally, and then there's another one afterwards. Um, and it's it's definitely the kind of book where you find new stuff when you go back to it. It's deep. I could have said this for the complex, but holds together really. But it's, uh, you know, it's 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 rich. There's all sorts of detail. You've got an unreliable narrator, set in a kind of dying earth sort of setting. Um, moving on to number nine, Brie, book set in France. Ah, well now, I'd originally put May Grey. Then I thought I would actually go for. Um, Flowers for Mrs. Harris oh, by yeah, Paul brilliant. Gallico. <laughs> um, and this was recommended to us by my French teacher. We went to France on a school trip when I was 17. And she said, this is a lovely book, read this. So we all read it. And it is, it's lovely. It's about um, an American, uh, a British char lady. So that's a cleaning lady mm. who falls in love with a designer dress that one of her clients has got and saves up all her money so she can go to Paris and buy herself a designer dress. And it was made into a film with Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Harris, and it was called Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And it was good because it had got Angela Lansbury in it and she's fantastic. But the book is just lovely. Uh, mine's more about attacking France, um, I was going to say that. <laughs> Bernard Cornwell's Richard Sharp books set during the Napoleonic oh. Wars. Again, in fact, I've got, an, I've got a new one on my on my TBR for Read What You Own. Um, okay. Well, I don't know if it's because Wensleydale is in Yorkshire. Is it? Yes, it's okay. in the Yorkshire Dales. Okay. Clues in the question. <laughs> um I suddenly thought about J.B. Priestley, who I haven't thought about for quite a while, and I read a lot of these when I was in my 20s. Um, and my favourite J.B. Priestley book is called The Good Companions, mm. and it's about a, a it's about found family, really. It's about a group of disparate people who all end up working for a kind of end-of-the-peer show, mm. and one of the main mm. characters is a, a working-class man from... Um, one of the mill towns, in, um, when he falls in with this crew, travelling players really, and mm -hmm. it, again, like like Flowers for Mrs. Harris, but with a lot more political savvy because JB Priestley had got that. Um, it's just lovely. It's yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, he wrote travel a travel book, didn't he? Go where he roams right. around through Britain. Yeah, and um, says on I think he was disparaging about the black, about the black, black country, country. Where but we forgive him that we used to live. Well, he did mention the um, there was a rather elaborately decorated dairy building on the on the road out of Wolverhampton. There is was yeah, which was which was knocked down and turned into a McDonald's. <laughs> Oh, it was beautiful. I know, Such I know, I know. Anyway, uh, I've, I've put um, a new discovery for me, L.J. Ross, uh -huh. who's a crime writer, whose mm. books are set in the North East. I, I sort of thought, you know, someone who, again, someone whose work is embedded in place. Mm. So so she takes specific places and sets her, sets her crime novels. So you can be on holiday looking at the tourist stuff and imagining it littered with bodies. <laughs> Um, okay, yes. moving on, number 11, Asagio. I think it's actually Asiago. Ah, I okay. It Set in Italy, or it's some kind of summer read. Room with a view. Okay. E.M. Forster. Yep. Another one of the authors that I read an awful lot of in my 20s. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm crime again that. with uh, Michael Dibdin's Aurelio Zen Mysteries, oh. which are series, detective novels. He's a, a, a magistrate, but they, the, mag, the Italian magistrates are actually have a sort of investigative role. Um, it was briefly made into a TV series too. And it was, was great. Good. Yeah. 
Like, you can't win them all. Uh, Twelve Sam. halloumi are something that's small but packs a punch, like you. <laughs> a non-violent punch. Yes. Right? A Quaker what, punch. With it being a Quaker and everything. <laughs> this is my halloumi. Ah, oh, now. It is part of a series of poetry books that was published by Penguin from the uh, mid-60s. And this is Penguin Modern Poets, number 10. Um, which is like a, a legend. Penguin Modern Poets number 10, The Mersey Sound. Um, so it was three poem, three poet, each volume in Penguin Modern Poets is three poem, three poets. Roger McGough, this was Roger McGough, Adrian Henry, Brian Patton. And this was the first poetry book I bought for myself that wasn't something that I needed for an O-level or an A-level course. And it was a complete and utter revelation to me, this book, because you'd got poems that featured Batman and Robin. You'd got poems that talked about Ban the Bomb. You'd got poems that talked about bus tickets. And it was just like, at the time, I so I bought this when I was 15 maybe the first copy because i used to buy copies and give them away to blokes that i fancied in the hope that they'd ask me to go out with them but they never did but i think this copy this actual copy here yeah. is probably the fourth one i ever bought um mm. and at the time we were doing t.s Eliot at school and i hated t.s Eliot. hated the privilege and the fact that they wrote, he wrote poetry that you could only understand if you'd had a classical private education. I just loathed T.S. Eliot so much. And then I got this book that had council houses and um, God bless all policemen and s fighters of crime. May the thieves go to jail for a very long time. It's the first verse of Good Night, Good Bat Night Man. And it was just like, oh my God people write poetry about stuff i know about mm -hmm. it's not father tiresias old man with wrinkled dogs what uh, um, i'll stop before it all yeah, goes horribly okay. wrong but yeah penguin modern poets number 10 the mersey sound roger mcgough adrian henry brian patton fantastic look at, look designed book as well it's the yeah. guy I just spotted it's designed by alan spain uh, who did a lot for penguin including uh, the 87th Precinct series. Oh. It's some fantastic covers for those in their green covered crime series. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely the cover that made me buy it because it looks like an album cover. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It looks yeah. like yeah. I saw it in the, the shop in Birmingham and just couldn't, couldn't not pick it up. And they would perform with bands, and yeah. some of them were in yeah. music yeah. bands yeah. as Roger well. Yeah, Roger was in the scaffold. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so, um, yeah. I'm going to say um, T.S. Eliot. Boo! <laughs> uh, I actually like T.S. Eliot. To me, it doesn't bother. If this wasn't what I planned to say. Sorry. I'm going to say T.S. Eliot, uh, let's say, I don't know, Little Gidding for a short a short one, uh, rather than The Wasteland, which is long. Um, to me, the allus allusions don't bother me. The fact that you'd need a lifetime of decoding to figure it all out. Um, you know, I'm happy to read them. Just as I'd be happy to listen to a piece of music that hasn't got lyrics, I'm happy to read it for the music. Yeah. It's an alarm to say, curse T.S. Eliot every day at 11.30. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so just, just to, you know, just to give the a balanced point of view i had actually said capture in the rye by jd salinger short novel that does indeed pack a punch uh 13 colby cheese a book everyone loves but you're indifferent to i'm never indifferent that's the trouble i'm you very i'm a, got... I'm a person of marmite well, you know I what they you, you know what they say in poetry: the worst lack all conviction, and the best are filled with a passion. No, hang on, mm. the best lack all conviction, and, and the, the worst, worst are filled with a passionate, passionate intensity. 
Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to have to say Harry Potter. Oh, mm. who cares? Mm. I mean, I'd, I'd say Twilight series and romantic vampires in general. Yeah. I did read Interview with a Vampire and Rice, and yeah, I thought as, a, as one book, great. But for it to become a whole sort of genre you can read nothing else of, I, I don't know. Not, not for me, not for me, not for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, three more to go. Pepper Jack, book with a spicy kick. Mm-hmm. Friends, I give you Indian Vegetarian Cookery <laughs> by Jack Santa Maria. This is a book that changed the lives of many a vegetarian in the mid 70s to mid 80s. Um, Yeah, this when we found out that there were other culinary traditions that did really good vegetarian cookery, um, it was just like, oh, well, we'll just eat that then. Uh, Away with your nut roasts. Um, And this was, yeah. It's a fantastic cookbook. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. And spicy. Good, good, yes. So we, although we prepared for this, we didn't confer on what we'd chosen. So my gag of saying Nadia's simple spices <laughs> is now completely diffused. So 15 Vegan Cheese, a book you'd be better off without. Although we have had some vegan cheese made out of yeah. cashews, it was alright. Yeah, it was lovely. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm indignant on the behalf of the vegan cheese for this one. Yeah. Um, but yes, a book that I think um, most teenage women, girls, would be better off without, or would be better off with the load of rubbish that we're told that it's a romance thing Wuthering Heights Mm. Wuthering Heights when I were a lad um, that kind of I mean basically it's a it's a tale about a wife beating drunk a kind of I don't know what you'd say Cathy was really Um, it's just it's horrible it's a horror story um but there we were at O level reading about this great love story. Oh, it's great, this love story. Um, and I think that's a really, really, really bad example to set to 15 year olds. I mean, I know there's loads of bad examples, um, but it would just, yeah. yeah, Wuthering Heights would be better off without the it's a great love story yeah i think it's a great horror horror story um except if it except insofar as it's inspired romantic monsters like the twilight like the series. twilight series yeah yeah as mentioned in number 13 okay last one feta a salty character mm-hmm. that's not the last one we've got two more after have we that. ricotta and paneer oh dear oh yeah okay yeah. We'll carry on then uh, um, salty character Feta, my feta is very salty and sugary and all sorts of crazy things. Let's preserve it. Probably the, if you only ever want one book about making jams and chutneys and that kind of thing, this is the book to get. It's just, it's a, yeah. Okay. Let's preserve it by Beryl. I want to say Beryl Cook, but she's the artist, isn't she? What's her name? You can tell it's been used because it's got jam finger marks. It has got jam finger marks. It's great. Nice one. It's a great one. Okay. Um, Salty character. Well, there is um, Salty Walt, one of our illustrious Mm. subscribers. Um, I'm going to say Aquaman. Oh. Because of being in the sea, uh, I see what you did there. I think if you were to, if you were to rush up to Jason Momoa at some kind of meet and greet event and give him a surreptitious lick, <laughs> you'd, you'd get you'd get salt. 
Okay, 17. Ah. Now, these these I didn't notice because they're on another page. Um, ricotta, a book that has something for everyone. Well, we have started having ricotta cheese. We have started having ricotta cheese. cheese. Given that it's got, like, no fat yeah. or something, it's, it's really nice. Very nice yeah. salmon pat, smoked yeah. salmon pate. Mm. Um, my ricotta is that Delia Smith big cookery book that I can't remember what it's actually called, but it, uh, got, yeah, it might be yeah. called Everyday Cookery. Yeah, it's big. No, it's, it's Delia Smith's Illustrated Cookery Course. I think that was the one I think that that's, everybody yeah, had. Yeah, and it has got something for... You'd probably find a little tidbit in there. Well, I haven't prepared these. I think what I've been thinking about while we've been reading and watching a lot more Shakespeare mm. is uh, Shakespeare, they... They do that thing of working on lots of different levels, you know, so you can have maybe, maybe bawdy humour, adventure, romance, philosophy, all, all at the same time. Um, so uh, Shakespeare, accepting you need to sort of open the tin a bit. Number 18, this is the end. <laughs> Pannier, a book with an uncommon setting. Mm. Go on then. Right then. This is another series. It's by an author called J.A. Sutherland, of whom I know nothing except that they write these books. And it's a series of science fiction. Um, Hornblower in space, mm. basically. The, the, the lead character, Alexis Carew, um, is a young woman who lives on a um, colony planet and joins the Navy to get away from an arranged marriage mm. and to help save her uncle's farm. There's space and then there's kind of interstitial space that allows for fast travel. But it's very... Um, it's a very uncertain space to be in and strange things can happen in it. Mm. And that's done a good, I think that's made a good job of trying to find a travel medium in space that is as dangerous as the high seas would have been when you had sail, sailing ships. Mm. Mm. A rollicking good read. Mm. I love them. We've so, done, we've done the cheese tag. It's not called the cheese shop sketch, is it? No, like it's not I called the cheese shop. It. The cheesy book tag, but none of those books are very cheesy. Okay, so thanks everybody. We'll be back soon with something else.